they said, you know, do you want to sit down? I'm like, you know, I've had kind of a lot of coffees today. <laughs> I'm going to take the portable mic. Um, whenever we do something like this, um, I'm never quite sure what I'm going to do because I'm never quite sure what mood folks will be in or whether we will have like an extremely mixed audience or a slightly mixed audience, by which I mean like how many kids are here. <laughs> um, so we have some, and I'll try to ride the brake on my cussedness, but like fair warning, I, it, I don't swear because I have a bad vocabulary, I swear because I have really great vocabulary. <laughs> in the appropriate moment. Still, I'll, I'll try to ride that break a little bit. I won't be able to eliminate it all the way because um, I'll sound like I have a stutter. <laughs> then I constantly try to think ahead about five, six words in the sentence and it all goes south on me. So, I've got a few things that I can read for you today. But what we're going to do is we're going to exercise democracy here to the best of our ability and I'm going to kind of get a read on people. Who has seen or heard or read The Adventures of the Princess and Mr. Whiffle? Okay. Um, now, <laughs> somebody actually holds up both books. <laughs> um, who was here two years ago when I did? Okay, now I'm, are those, that, that seems like most of the people who brought up their hands originally. When I was here two years ago, I actually read the second one, because that had just come out, and was a little, I think that was, might have been even the first time I read it in public. Um, and that's a little strange, because normally I read the first one, I've read the first one a lot of times, but I think I was kind of excited about my new one, and I wanted to try it out. So what we have queued up here is the first princess book. So, how do we feel about starting out with that? I don't have it here to like push the buttons myself. Do we have somebody with their finger on the, the lights? Like, could we potentially dim the house lights a little bit? <laughs> oh, four points for effort. Because <laughs> I don't have access to that, uh, which is too bad because I sort of like the dark room. This is a perfect, you know, sort of bedtime story. So what I'm going to be doing, opportunity for things to happen. <laughs> I tried this, I was out at uh, Emerald City, and uh, originally I thought I was going to be able to have the laptop and push the button myself. Turns out that wasn't going to fly, because I didn't know I was going to be on the main stage until 10 minutes beforehand. Uh, I was walking around the con going, where is this room? I can't find my conference room that I'm in. And I kept asking people at the convention, I'm like, where do I go? And they're like, that doesn't sound like any of the convention rooms. Finally somebody said, it's the main stage, it's right there. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm in Pat Roethlis, I'm just doing an author talk. And they're like, yeah, main stage, right there. <laughs> They've been looking for you for 20 minutes. <laughs> they need to mic you, and I'm like, oh, well, okay, I guess I'll, I'll do that. And so we tried it out. First off, doing it like fifth grade film strip style, where every time I wanted to advance a page, I would go, boop. <laughs> and uh, they, they rolled with it. The tech guys there made it happen. Unfortunately, the constant booping, while hysterical, was not really appropriate for the whole story time mood we were going for. So here, what we're going to do for his silent hand signals, Okay, uh, here we have, again, the adventures of the princess and Mr. Whiffle, and I'm going to gesture to my partner in crime back here, and he will advance the page. I'll, I'll do it like this. Here's our practice. Nope. Oh. Yeah, oh, it's working well so far. Yeah, okay. So, once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a Marzipan castle. 
I'm actually going to get down off the stage so that you're not tempted to look at me. You're going to watch the pictures. Here. <laughs> Let's not set the bar that low. Right? If you start applauding me for very basic physical tasks, we're really going to reward the wrong behaviors. Pretty soon I'll show up in front of a group of people and like, like drink my glass of water and look at y'all. No! Parents, this is your warning, right? For, for real, maybe, you know, we've had some democracy happen, and that means that we are going to read this book. It's not super for little kids, or maybe even for some grown-ups. <laughs> but that's the peril of democracy, isn't it? Okay. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a marzipan castle. She lived there all alone. Oh, oh you're anticipating me. <laughs> Did I mention I'm super caffeinated? <laughs> Except for Mr. Whiffle, who didn't count because he was only a teddy bear. And the thing under the bed. Perfect. See, I'm going to do some dramatic pause in here. So. Mr. Whiffle was the princess's best friend. They spent all their time together and had many fabulous adventures. They found buried treasure by the old stump. They defeated the Black Duke's Rebellion in the Battle of Bainbridge. Victory came at a great price. The princess was sorely wounded, and Sir Whiffle was forced to take terrible revenge. <laughs> they fought Greenbeard the Pirate, and defeated him. Though in the heat of battle, Mr. Whiffle was nearly drowned, and was only saved due to the princess's quick thinking. But when her daytime adventures were over, the princess always returned to her marzipan castle. After she had dinner and washed her face, she and Mr. Whiffle went to bed. But they were not alone. The princess had never seen the thing under the bed because it didn't like the lights. During the daytime, when the bright sun was out, it hid in the deep shadows under the bed. It even hid at night when the lamps were lit. That's why the princess always kept a candle burning. But sometimes, when it was stormy out, there were drafts in her room. And then the thing didn't need to hide anymore. The princess had never seen the thing, but she knew what it was like. Lights were low, you could see it reaching out from under the bed. 
reach up, then bend to reach the top of the bed, and tickle the princess silly. <laughs> This is where I stop reading to my boy, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One day a package arrived for the princess. The princess loved the kitten. She and Mr. Whiffle spent a long time trying to decide what his name should be. The princess wanted to call him Mr. Munchop because of how he smelled. Mr. Whiffle wanted to call him Marlock because of his pointy, pointy claws. They compromised by calling him M.M., or Emmy for short. But then Emmy got lost. He wasn't in their treasure mine, or in the old cave. Mr. Whiffle suggested they look in the river, but Emmy wasn't there either. They knew he couldn't get over the wall or past the gate. They looked everywhere, but they still hadn't found Emmy by dinner time. Oh. That night, the princess couldn't sleep. Thinking about her lost kitten made her tummy hurt. Even worse, her candle was short, and the night was long, and her tummy hurt. Then the princess heard a noise from under the bed. She knew it couldn't be the thing because it never made any noise, except for sometimes a soft, velvety rustle. The noise sounded familiar to the princess. It was like the sound an animal would make if it wanted to cry out, but it was muffled and quiet. Then the noise stopped and the princess heard a soft, velvety sound, like something was reaching and bending, reaching and bending. Then something wet and warm fell under her face. Then Mother Moon came out from behind a cloud, and the princess saw what the thing was holding. <laughs> it was a big piece of marzipan. <laughs> it was sticky and drippy because the thing had been eating it. He wanted to share and be friends. <laughs> he was already friends with Emmy. They had been playing under the bed all day. <laughs> Emmy had been trying to call up to the princess, but she couldn't. She'd been eating marzipan with the thing, and her little kitten mouth was all gummed up. When she tried to mew, it came out. <laughs> But now they were together again, and now that the princess had met the thing, she wasn't scared anymore. And so the princess ate them. <laughs> wow. I'm just going to give you a moment. <laughs> the top one is my favorite. <laughs> no, 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 we're not at the end yet. <laughs> and there was nothing left but sticky bones. <laughs>
So she and Mr. Wiffle made a fort out of it. <laughs> and had tea. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That none of you would think that I would engage in anything so horrible as like a cheap twist ending. This is not a story with a twist at the end. What's really happened here is this is a story that maybe you have not been paying as close attention to as you could have. Um, Maybe it's a story that you've mistaken due to certain elements of like protective coloration, right? It's got a princess. <laughs> so long as you guys are hearing it too, I'm fine. Hearing what? Otherwise, I'm having a stroke. I'm <laughs> cheering for you. Well, I was looking forward to that. Um, so, go ahead and reel it all, all the way back to the beginning.
Those things tend to be bite-sized. Like it started as an advice column, but it very quickly became a humor column uh, because I realized it was easier to make fun of people than to actually give them advice. <laughs> Plus, it was like super entertaining. And uh, advice columns, the only people who read them are kind of like lawyers and people, you know, uh, who like watching other people have problems. It's kind of this niche market. But, you know, if, if you write in and like I give you good advice, you care, and maybe a few friends, maybe a few people have a similar problem. And so those are the people who would read the column, but, you know, if you write in and then I make fun of you, like everyone is interested. <laughs> Except for you, but you know, <laughs> statistically it's still way better writing. <laughs> Uh, so I have a few of those humor columns. Um, I used to, I will admit, I write poetry. I've got some of that here. But um, I, I'm in the mood for a little bit of Q&A. Uh, I've been on some writing panels. I've uh, you know, had the chance to talk about some of the craft or what's going on. But I try to keep it kind of on the topic as opposed to like stuff that's going on with me. And I'm guessing if you're here, you might be curious about some Rothfuss specific things you might want to ask some questions about. So uh, let's do some Q&A. Uh, let's try it without using the mic because I've stolen this mic that they put up there. Also, I hate it when people have to line up for questions. If you have a question, just raise your hand and then I'll call you. You'll ask, I'll repeat it, and then I'll answer it. We'll try this here. I have a favorite quote from my own books. See, that's a real damning question because if I say yes, it means not only do I remember a quote from my own books, but it means that I've thought about many different quotes and wondered about which one is my favorite. So I'm going to lie and say no, I don't. <laughs> look like kind of a better person than I really am. That's really what I'm hoping to achieve here is to, is to fool you all, uh, not show you the man behind the curtain. The question is, do I spend a lot of time outside? <laughs> Much more gracious than that, but I'm kind of summarizing. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I feel the need to give her a background statement. Uh, where it's like, you know, folk moves through a lot of different environments, you know, do you yourself experience the environment? Um, you know, to draw off from that, I'm reminded, I got to hang out with Will Wheaton's son, Ryan Wheaton. Uh, he's a great writer, you know, we, we, I was in LA and we got to hang out and chat a little bit, and he brought something up, we were talking on some subject, and he said, like, he just busted out like this crazy fact, I'm like, the conversation had wandered in some weird rabbit hole direction, and he goes, oh yeah, well everybody knows that, you know, Victorian uh, letter making, you know, between 1875, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that's super cool and really interesting. I'm like, seriously, how the hell do you know that? And he was like, he was like I, I stay inside a lot. <laughs> and so you say that, and I'm like, I'm like I, I stay inside a lot too. You know? uh, why do I know a lot about, uh, a, a little bit about a lot of things? I stay inside a lot, and um, I've read a book a day for most of my life, and even if you know, a lot of those books have just been for fun. If you get like one fact out of each one, you know, that kind of piles up over a bunch of years. Uh, I'm not saying I hate the outside. <laughs> but I've been learning to over these last couple of days. <laughs> Seriously, why? What sort of lizard people found this? <laughs> like, who? walking through the United States, it's like, hmm, there's water, trees, beautiful trees, it's like, no, 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 oh, it's like, then you, find, you eventually get here, and you're like, whoa, it's like if the sun could make a noise, right, it would be making the, 
best thing ever. <laughs> or if that's everything that's wrong with America. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go back and I'm like, Amanda, my assistant, will say, so how was your battle? And I'm like, they loved it. <laughs> I got like a pot for drinking water. I sneezed once, they loved it. <laughs> jumped off the stage once and knocked him dead. Uh, and I'm just like, are you having a stroke? Uh, and, yeah, I've completely forgotten what I was talking about. Insult. 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 Um, um, yes, like if I'm in a situation and things are hot, and pretty much I process pretty quickly. You know, uh, uh, in terms of how I think about something, how I feel about something, I'm able to take it in, and almost immediately, I can articulate how I feel about something. And so it's nice when I'm on stage, when I'm doing Q and A, um, when I'm having a quick-witted conversation with other quick-witted people. Um, it's a ton of fun. It's one of my great joys in life to have those conversations. However, right, the danger is. It's one thing, like, if you if you think that, like, somebody's a jerk to me, and, like, can I lay the hammer down on this person? That's where you might think that I would put those skills to use. Like, if I'm going to insult somebody, that would be... But no, that, that never happens in real life. Nobody really comes out of the blue and just insults you. Who do you get angry at in your life? Yeah. Your friends? <laughs> Who do you really get angry at? Family! Spouses, right? Everyone's like... <laughs> People were super loud about you know, Some people said, relationships. Like, Spouse. <laughs> yeah. And so I end up having a conversation with my, with my lovely partner, Sarah. And sometimes I get angry. And sometimes I feel feelings. And then immediately I have access to like so many words to express those feelings. And that can be bad. That can be super bad. So it's a blessing and a curse is what I'm saying. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't like making fun of people or mocking people for real. It's way better to do it pretend. Uh, that's how my entire peer group shows love to each other. <laughs> um, I see orange hand in the back. Story that inspired me when I was young. This one's tricky because uh, it's a question that kind of is assuming certain things, and this ties into what I consider, or what I think of to myself as like the myth of the author. Because you, you, you mentioned, for one, inspired. You know, like there's this thought that authors are inspired in some way. Um, and also it's like when you were young, you know, what was the story? And what I get asked a lot that's very similar to this is like, you know, when did you realize you wanted to be an author? You know, as if there was a moment in my life that up until then I was regular, right? <laughs> and then it's like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know? Or whatever video game noise that would make, right? I have a transformatory event, I read a book that like shocks me out of my life course and into the other channel. But that's not kind of how life really works. Um, or at least my life never worked that way. And the whole inspiration thing, I don't know if I believe in inspiration. Um, it's kind of, it's a cool thought that something will happen. I mean, even the word is cool, like in spiritus, means to like have a spirit inside you. Um, but like mostly if you write, you kind of like sit down and turn the crank on that thing for years. Um, and when it works well, it's great, but when it works, badly and you still kind of have to do it. Um, that's the downside. And, I, and who's aspiring writers, hobby writers, people who write, like to write? I don't want to lie to you and say, oh yeah, I super got inspired and then I was a writer. Um, I mostly wrote just because I liked it. Uh, now, if you want to ask about stories that I loved when I was a kid, um, that's easier. I read every damn thing. Uh, but I also listened to the original Hobbit Rankin and Bass movie um, audio track on record. 
right? Because back in the day, there were these things called records. <laughs> and, uh, and so I would listen to that, and I had like a follow-along book. And so like, I could sing the entire score of the Rankin and Bass Hobbit. Uh, Fifteen birds and five fir trees. You know, I mean, you, you all. I mean, I'm assuming who's seen the old one, right? The real one. <laughs> I need mean, a fury inside of me. So let's see. First, who's seen the old one, the Rankin and Bass Hobbit? Who's seen the new one, the new Hobbit? Oh, you disgust me. <laughs> Who saw all three of them? You, 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 even if it disgusts me, please be honest. <laughs> Who quit watching them? Really? Oh, okay, now that makes me happy. <laughs> Never watched them. I haven't seen no. any of them because I know my rage will be too powerful. <laughs> uh, like, I really, I knew, I knew from the beginning. Okay, we do, I, actually, I can't, no one want to talk about it now. No <laughs> <laughs> want to talk about it now. Let's just, let's keep this happy and upbeat. Let's go to answering some questions. I'm going to look at the time. I'm going to take a deep breath through my nose. Not think about nothing. <laughs> Personal fear, not 
not something I should tell to an entire room of people. <laughs> but I felt the need to explain it right because if you all really start applauding me doing nothing, I worry that it might ruin me forever. That's the, <laughs> that's the point. Okay, uh, we'll do a few more. I'm going to aim for popcorn questions, short questions that I can, short fun questions I can answer a bunch of before we're out of time here. So, you. No, but I will say I do a podcast with Matt Stefkin. Uh, right now it's called uh, Unattended Consequences. I kind of wanted to call it Two White Guys Talking. <laughs> it just, it's an excuse for me and Max to talk on the phone every week because we just we're friends and we like to talk and we don't make space for it unless we're turning it into a job. So um, you know, if you're interested in that, you can go hear the story of the loss of Book Three on an airplane. Um, yeah. What's your favorite card against humanity card? Yeah. Favorite cards against humanity card? <laughs> Any of the ones I can remember that I like, I actually cannot say out loud here. <laughs> <laughs> I have not ever explored, the question is, have I ever explored the tunnels under the Madison campus, or under the Madison the city? No, I haven't. Uh, no, I haven't, although I know that they are vast. Um, the books that are reported by two different people, how do you say, uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't put you in the Demaru. I say the Demaru. Yeah. I say the Demaru, unless I say the Demaru. Because <laughs> I think I've said both. I would say regional variants. <laughs> it's a dialect, a dialect thing. Uh, I should get over here. You. Uh, so this is a short craft question. How do we develop ourselves in the right dialogue and rich characters? Oh, that's super easy. I can tell you how to write. <laughs> and it's a, it's a fair question, right? So there's just no way I can do even even a lousy answer. Um, no, like even a joke answer would be too big. No, you don't get two tries, you would. <laughs> I was mean, I made myself feel guilty. Okay, do it. What are your top two favorite innovations from your people at Like, what two things are you most proud of? Like, in the world? Good question. Uh, my favorite two innovations out of the book. Um, I'm proud of my particular slant on naming, because uh, I'm certainly not the first to ever talk about naming magic. Uh, naming magic is one of the true, like, universal cultural constants. It shows up in every culture all throughout history. Uh, somebody on Twitter got all on me. They're like, oh, I kind of liked your book at first. Then I realized how much you ripped off Wizard of Earthsea. And I'm like, please. <laughs> please. I ripped off way more people than Wizard of Earthsea. <laughs> it's like, me and Ursula are like just ripping off the same like universal archetypal like superstitious whatever. Uh, you know, please give credit where credit is due. Um, I, I'm proud of my, my take on naming. I, I think that that's, that's fairly new. Um, I'm proud of the man mothers. I don't care. If, I'm proud, I'm proud of, of the endemic culture, even if everyone's like, nobody would actually feel that way, and nobody would actually discount the concept of fatherhood, except yes, they did all the time, and they still do in the modern day in certain Woo! cultures. There's a particular island nation that to this day, if you show up, they will laugh at your dumb, dumb ass if you like, express the opinion that a man has something to do with making a baby. So, yeah. <laughs> See? There, we have an emissary. <laughs> Neither. Eladin. Eladin. Should I just do a bunch of names? Eladin, Kvoth, Ari, Imre, Felurian, any others? Uh, Old Tavalin? Uh, Tavalin the Great. The, the thing in the tree is called the cafe. Um, the seven. It's just the, oh, the, uh, the champion. Yeah. I thought the, the 
and seven is pretty obvious, yeah. <laughs> so.
probably mostly in the revision process, which is why my revision process is so intensive. I don't go in with a lot of plans. Uh, baseball cap. Um, what is a gear wheel? We have had mention after mention after mention, and it is never explained what it is. What is a gear wheel? Uh, it's, it's a device that's produced in the art of fishery, for those of you that maybe haven't read the book 15 times. Um, <laughs> and both references it. It's, it's a useful device. Does this count as a spoiler? It's not really a gear win. You know, I, I think a gear win, you know, we're, we're down into the deep geek right now. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure, although it's not codified until it's in a book, so I always reserve the right to kind of tweak this around. I'm pretty sure a gear wind is designed to turn heat into angular momentum, right? Which is like, there's like eight engineers in the room, they're like, oh shit, that'd be super useful. <laughs> everybody else, everybody else is like, I <laughs> uh, in that 
am kind of mental in like 18 different ways all over the place in terms of my thoughts and feelings and opinions. So if I harvest a certain subsection of those and then expand them into a character, they end up being different. That actually relates to the, the oh, they're making out over there. No. I should uh, not have mentioned that. But see, I actually answered part of your question, but you were doing something way better than learning about the craft and writing. Um, I'm so sorry, that was a real rude thing for me to do. Come by my booth, I will give you a present as an apology. <laughs> lastly, I will say, uh, for those of you that maybe don't know about it, we did actually throw together a booth here, kind of last moment. We're down at 740 in the hall. I'm doing signings there, a bunch. We have a bunch of merchandise. We have the princess book uh, for sale. We have both versions for sale. All of the proceeds for everything from the booth go to support World Builders. It's a charity that I run. We've raised millions and millions of dollars uh, to support various charitable causes around the world. Um, and if you're curious about more of that, you can stop down and ask the folks there. Um, there's just a, a bunch of stuff, uh, merch based on the book. And we're just, and this is something we're doing just today, <clears throat> uh, because we have a fundraiser happening next week, and we do experimental product design, stuff that we couldn't do normally. But it's a big Indiegogo, so we let people come in and say, hey, we're going to do a perfume. If you want a perfume, come by it, because we don't know how many we're going to make. That's happening next week. Down at the booth, we have the prototype perfume samples. And so if you stop by, you can smell them and guess who they're supposed to be. Um, so if you come up to me and you're like, wow, that smells really good today, that's because I have been screwing and unscrewing the, the, the lids of these. Normally I'm not quite so fragrant. Um, right now I smell like all of my characters. Uh, which sounds... I don't want to end on that note, but I will end by saying thank you all so much for coming.